Lizzie. Something a lot of people don't know is that bipolar episodes are triggered by jet lag when flying across the country or the world in multiple time zones. I have experienced this so many times throughout my life and there's so much research backing this up. Everything I mentioned is gonna be linked in the video description. For most bipolar people, when you fly east, you'll go manic and when you fly west, you'll go into depression. But for me, it's flipped. This is why flying between different time zones messes up the body's circadian rhythms for everyone, not just bipolar people. Circadian rhythms have to do with the 24-hour clock inside each of us which has to do with sleep, energy level, appetite, and body temperature. For healthy people this process releases melatonin at the end of the day to help you fall asleep and cortisol in the morning to help people wake up. For bipolar people the circadian rhythms do not function properly. This is why in mania and depression it can be hard to fall asleep, difficult to wake up, we're often not hungry or have a bigger appetite. In mania it often feels like we're burning up and in depression sometimes we get really cold. According to a paper published in the National Center for Biotechnology, quote, disruptions of circadian rhythms have long been proposed as a fundamental cause of bipolar disorder. Here's a definition of jet lag in the Medical Hypotheses Journal. The typical jet lag manifestations, insomnia during local sleep time, day fatigue, reduced concentration, irritability, and exhaustion with mild depression are attributed to transient desynchronization in the circadian rhythm until the internal biological clock is rephased to the new environmental conditions. For regular people, jet lag goes away once you're in the new location for the number of days that the time zone change was. For example, if you fly from Atlanta to Colorado, that is two hours of a time change. So by day three of your trip, your body will be synced up to that time zone and jet lag will go away. If you fly from New York to London, it is five hours apart. So for the first five days, your body will not be synchronized and you'll have jet lag and on day six, you'll be back to normal. For bipolar people though, this disruption of circadian rhythm lasts a lot longer. Before I was diagnosed with bipolar, I remember I would have the worst jet lag of anyone I knew. I would just need so much more sleep, be so exhausted, and it's because I'm bipolar. But independent of jet lag, circadian rhythm disruption is a core part of having bipolar disorder. According to the National Institute of Health, evidence suggests strong associations between circadian rhythms and mental health. Disrupted circadian rhythms appear to be both a state marker and a trait of bipolar disorder there will be chronic circadian disruption throughout our lives. If circadian rhythms could be fixed, it would almost cure bipolar disorder. Bipolar medications are supposed to work to partially reset those circadian rhythms, but not very effective. It could be a lot better. So hopefully in the future, they develop better medications that can completely hack our circadian rhythm. The NIH article continues. Circadian disruption in the form of jet lag has been reported to induce bipolar episodes in susceptible people who fly across multiple time zones. East to West travelers with bipolar disorder who then experience a phase delay in circadian rhythms at their destination are more likely to develop depression, whereas those traveling west to east who then experience a phase advance in their circadian rhythms are more likely to develop mania. It's important to note that these episodes triggered by jet lag can last for months at a time. Here is an explanation for the east and west. Another quote in the article from National Center for Biotechnology, acute manic episodes were associated with circadian dysregulation of about seven hour phase advances Mixed manias were over six hours delayed, whereas bipolar depression was associated with four to five hour phase delayed compared to the controls. When you fly east, you lose hours, which is what mania is. When you fly west, you gain hours, which is depression. If you fly from California to Boston and the next day wake up with everyone else at 8 a.m. Eastern time, it actually feels like 5 a.m. for you. So you're sleep deprived, which triggers mania. 
going into the depression. So if you fly from New York to Seattle, if you're used to going to bed at 10 p.m., that's actually 7 p.m. in West Coast time. So you'll probably go to bed early and then wake up with everyone else around 8 a.m., which feels like 11 a.m. So you will have gotten a lot more sleep, but combined with the jet lag causes depression. I felt so validated when I learned all of this because it explains my entire bipolar episodes in college. Like I said, mine is flipped, so I go manic flying west, depressed flying east. My family lives on the east coast, I grew up in Florida, and I went to college in Malibu, California. Three time zone differences. Immediately upon flying to California for the first time, I went into a hypomanic episode at the very beginning of college. My first ever manic episode and my first full bipolar episode I ever had. The flying gets more chaotic. I spent every summer when I was in college in Thailand teaching English with the Bible at a church there. The first summer I went to Thailand, I flew Korean Air. So I went from California west across the Pacific Ocean to Thailand. That summer, I was in a manic episode the whole time I was in Thailand. The next year when I flew to Thailand, I took Qatar Airlines, so I flew from the US across the Atlantic Ocean to Thailand. That summer in Thailand, I was in my depression episode. At the beginning of my sophomore year in college, I flew back to California with Korean Air. So this time it was going east. So I was in a depression episode at the very beginning of my sophomore year of college. Then going into my junior year of college, I came back from Thailand going west to America and then I went into a manic episode at the beginning of my junior year of college. If I have a child with bipolar disorder, I'm going to heavily encourage them to not go to college in a different time zone because flying back and forth to my family for Christmas, Thanksgiving, summer, to Thailand, it was just so chaotic and it made my bipolar so terrible. We're going to end this video with a call to action. Seven pieces of advice to make flying between time zones and jet lag less terrible for your bipolar. Number one, do not take a job as a flight attendant, pilot, or a job that requires you to consistently fly between time zones. Our bipolar brains are just too sensitive, so immediately know, pick a different career. Besides staying on meds, getting consistent sleep and sleeping enough is the most important thing you can do for your bipolar, so you have to have a consistent lifestyle with your sleep. Number two, exercise. Working out is so amazing for resetting circadian rhythms, Cardio is the most important thing to do. So running, biking, elliptical machine, or one of those workout classes where your heart rate is up the entire time. Number three, I recommend planning vacations in your time zone or one nearby. So if you live on the West Coast and wanna do a beach vacation, go to Mexico. If you live on the East Coast, go to the Bahamas. If you have friends or family in different time zones, send them this video, I'm just kidding. But sit down with them and explain the circadian rhythms jet lag bipolar and ask them if they can fly to visit you instead of you visiting them and pay for their plane ticket so that it's not like they're always paying to visit. You can pay for it, but be like, it's really important that I stay in my time zone. Number four, this is so important. Give yourself extra time to sleep once you get to your destination. Something super common in trips, let's say you sleep four hours on the airplane and then you get to your destination and it's the middle of the day, even though it actually feels like nighttime for you. So what most people do on trips is they go out and they do touristy things, even though they're really tired and didn't get enough sleep. So if you have bipolar, I know this is gonna be really hard. You're gonna feel like you're missing out, but you need to just go to the Airbnb and sleep for 10 hours. <laughs> maybe not 10 hours, maybe like seven hours, and then wait until the next day to do the touristy things. So make sure that you don't have any sleep debt. So if you typically sleep nine hours a day, make sure that 
the night of the airplane and the next night adds up to 18. You really need to explain to people in your life how important sleep is because I know I've experienced it with friends where they're like, why do you have to sleep? Why can't you go out with us? So it is really hard saying no to your friends and missing out, but make sure that you're getting enough sleep because as we talked about, sleep deprivation is a huge trigger for mania. Number five, do not eat food right before you go to sleep. If your body is digesting food while you're sleeping, your sleep is actually less restful. So it's really important right when you wake up, eat breakfast, eat lunch earlier, dinner earlier, so that you're getting all your calories in at least three hours before you go to sleep. And that's just like a life bipolar tip, not just for traveling. Number six, go on Seroquel, Quetiapine, or another sedative bipolar medication so that you will sleep. It's very common on a trip that it's nighttime there, but you don't feel tired at all. So Seroquel knocks you out. You will definitely sleep on it. It's so sedative. So it's really important to have something that will just ensure that you go to sleep. Number seven is the hardest, but the most amazing if you can actually stick to this. So I read about this in a Bible or Hope magazine article that's going to be linked below. So this is kind of a summary of the article. Let's say you are taking a trip from Washington DC to Seattle. So that is three time zones. What you want to start doing and the article recommends one week per time zone. So you can start three weeks in advance, one hour change per week. So on week one, let's say you usually go to bed at 10 p.m. and eat breakfast at 7 a.m. So the first week you're gonna go to bed at 11 p.m. and eat breakfast at 8 a.m. The second week you're gonna go to bed at midnight and eat breakfast at 9 a.m. The third week you're gonna go to bed at 1 a.m. and eat breakfast at 10 a.m. and you are synced to Pacific time. I have a trip coming up that is three time zone differences, so I'm actually gonna try this, but it's really hard for me to fall asleep even with Seroquel and really hard to wake up. So I think my bipolar is just already doing so terrible that I'm not gonna be able to do this, but everyone should try it out. The author of this article said that she travels a lot for work and that's why she's like so into doing it like this. But if the three weeks seems too intimidating, what you could do instead is over nine days, the first day, go back one hour, one hour, one hour. So you don't have to do the full three weeks, but gradually change the time of eating and sleeping. That's everything for this video. I am going to make a future video on circadian rhythms in bipolar in general, not just having to do with jet lag and traveling between time zones. Just because when I was researching for this video, I came across so many articles on just circadian and rhythm disruption in general so that's gonna be a future video i love you guys so much and i will see you in my next video bye